Welcome, dear ladies and gentlemen. My name is Markus Dahlhaus and I'm the Managing Director of BIA, Grundstoff and Galvanotechnik here in Solingen. I'd like to welcome you to the second BIA Online Info Forum here in Solingen. Like in the first BIA Online Info Forum, we would like to present to you an interesting mixture of topics dealing with the BIA group and the industry of electroplating. You might be interested what topics we want to present. At first we will present a topic by Johannes Groß. He is our energy management system officer and he will introduce to you the BIA climate strategy 2025. The second topic will be presented by Dr. Markus Hepp. He's our automotive industry technology manager and he will explain what BIA is doing to recycle plastics after the end of life of the vehicle. The third topic will be a topic about uh, um, the REACH regulation which we have in Europe. For us it's not only REACH, for us it's how BIA is substituting hazardous materials in the production. So this will be a very interesting topic also for you. Maybe you can see that this is more than just following the legislation. Finally, Dr. Felix Heinzler will present the latest technology trends which we are developing within BIA. He will give you an overview about uh, new products which we are developing, which are on their way into the modern car design. So maybe you will have some questions or you will have some uh, uh, topics which you also would like us to present to you. So you can ask these questions any uh, time during the meeting or during the online forum. Just use the chat function which is available uh, in, uh, in, in, this, uh, in the screen. I would also like you to fill in the questionnaire which will appear on your, uh, in your browser at the end of the uh, online info forum. So this will help us to be more, much more on point with the next BI info forum which we will do in the future, I'm sure. So, Let's start with the first topic, climate neutrally. This is a, a, yeah, a topic or a term which is on every lips at the moment. We hear about climate uh, change uh, conferences and so on. So we need uh, uh, more progress in this area. So what does this mean for a plating and plastic shop? In the past, to be honest, for me, it was usually energy, and energy is cost. A managing director is focused on cost in the, in the company, so we were already focusing on this topic, but we wanted to reduce the cost. Today, we have to put on another focus. We have to see carbon dioxide, so carbon footprint of our production. And Johannes Groß will now explain to you how BIA is going to reduce its carbon footprint and how we are going to be climate neutral in 2025. Hello, my name is Johannes Groß. I'm the leader for continuous improvement and also the responsible person for energy management here in BIA. Our goal is it to be climate neutral until 2025. Our strategy basically contains three steps. Emission monitoring, emission reduction and emission compensation. Because BIA is a big industrial company, we will never reach the target of zero emissions. BIA is monitoring its resources and energy consumption already for a long time. Since 2019, we started calculating our emissions in carbon dioxide equivalents. Our benchmark for comparison is the year of 2019, in which we emitted 5,000 tons of carbon dioxide. It is our goal to reduce our emissions by 5% year by year. Exemplary, I want to emphasize some projects which are at the moment ongoing inside our company. 
Okay, let's start with one of our projects to avoid the emission of carbon dioxide. We are here on top of our logistic building in Soling and behind me you can see our newest photovoltaic station here in Soling. All in all, we are having three photovoltaic stations here in Soling, which can produce energy for around 500 kilowatts. In one year, we can save up to 70 tons of carbon dioxide emissions with the use of our photovoltaics. Behind me, you can see also the first and the second photovoltaic station, which was implemented by BIA already a few years ago. One of our projects to reduce carbon dioxide emissions is to switch our carpool to electric mo mobility. At the moment we are emitting 151 tons of carbon dioxide every year by the use of our cars. We want to reduce this to zero with this change. In our existing buildings we are also exchanging all lighting technology to LED. With this action we can save up to 21 tons of carbon dioxide emissions per year. Of course, all new BIA constructions are equipped with modern lighting and building technology. With presence and daylight sensors, we can reduce the energy consumption to a minimum. Now we are here with one of our projects, which is connected to the rebuild of one of our plating lines. In the exhaust system, we installed a heat recovery with a daily average of 200 kilowatts. In one year, we can save up to 300 tons of carbon dioxide emissions. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, you could see that the BIA strategy to reduce the energy consumption is a strategy of steps, small steps to be honest, but step by step we will be able to reduce our energy consumption and we will start to produce much more green energy that we can use within our BIA plants. However, it would be naive to believe that within a very short time we can totally substitute the energy, uh, the, the carbon emissions by green energy. So what we will do is we will offset the residue of carbon dioxide which we will emit by uh, special projects where we can uh, bring a better uh, climate uh, balance to the company. The climate strategy is only a part of our sustainability strategy. Sustainability we can also influence by improving our products. So what does this mean? At the moment most of the chrome plated products have to be wasted after the use and they cannot be really recycled because the plastic material itself cannot be reused. BIA has worked on a technology to reduce this um, waste of material and we are able today to present to you how we will be able to uh, recycle also the plastic material. Dr. Markus Hepp will now present to you our strategy and our technology how to reuse chrome plated parts after the end of the life in the car. Okay, I'd like to welcome all um, to our online forum and this presentation is about our yeah, new recycling process. So consumer expectations are increasing more and more and uh, the consumer expects um, today high valuable surfaces, um, is, he expects durable surfaces and recently he expects also in the last years sustainable surfaces. And if you compare it, these, these expectations to the features of a chrome plated surface, uh, then you will see that it is, yeah, that the expectations can, or that a chrome surface can meet these expectations. So, um, Chrome itself, you have a layer, metal layer on top and um, a metal layer on top is always um, assessed by a customer as a very high valuable surface because uh, metals are valuable by themselves. Um, that's the reason why coins for example or wedding rings are also made out of metal. Um, you have a durable surface, chrome is very very resistant and for example also very UV resistant, corrosion resistant so you have a very durable surface and at the end you have also a, a sustainable surface because um, chrome layer has no allergenic potential 
um, a chrome layer is absolutely non-toxic. You have, because you have a, a composite material, a lightweight composite material, um, therefore in the use phase of a car, the, the energy consumption is, is quite low. If you look on the uh, composite materials and you have a recyclable surface or recyclable material, and this is uh, yeah, what I will tell you in the on the next few slides. Comparing to other composites, we have uh, clearly advantages of um, chrome-plated parts. You may think um, composites are not easy recyclable. That's true, but we see uh, for chrome-plated composites or yeah, chrome-plated parts, we think the recycling is um, comparable to uh, in comparison to other materials much more easier because we have several benefits. We have on the one hand the technical benefits. Metals themselves are infinitely recyclable. You can recycle them again and again and again without any quality issues or without any quality reductions. Um, the next thing is you have a low variety of platable plastic. So um, every chrome plated part, what you have on the market, you can collect them all together and you can then recycle them together. Um, the plating grade plastic, what we are using, is a high quality plastic. So, um, and these are all compatible to each other. So again, you can collect all chrome plated parts together and recycle them in one step. Um, there's no separation necessary. And um, metals are incompatible to plastics. So what does that mean? Um, metals are an inorganic compound and um, plastic is an organic compound and inorganics and organic compounds doesn't really fit together. Yeah, if you can imagine, if you pour some oil in water, it won't mix. It will easily, se uh, easily be separated. So, and this is the same situation if you have a metal layer on top of a plastic, you can e easier separate them in comparison to other composites. So, of course, and recycle, recyclable materials have uh, environmental benefits. We use more recycling material, we need less raw material mining. Due to the very high efficiency of the metal recycling, the energy consumption of metal recycling is um, uh, much lower than the energy consumption by doing mining. Um, for example, copper recycling needs 85% less energy than copper mining. With the same result, you receive copper at the end. All in all, you have a less carbon dioxide consumption. This is because, of course, the pro um, if the process is very efficient, um, then you need for the recycling itself uh, less energy and therefore less carbon dioxide. And um, by doing recycling, it is you can use um, regenerable energy much better than uh, by doing the mining. So this is also an environmental benefit. And in the end, we have an economical benefit. We have mainly on top high valuable metals on the surface, on the composite materials. And these metals are very expensive and it is worth to do the recycling alone on these metals. Um, so therefore, um, professional metal recycler are yeah, keen to get these um, plastic components only by doing the, the metal recycling. But, um, and they are not interested in do the plastic recycling because they are metal recyclers. So we think it is worth to uh, concentrate or to focus on the, on the plastic recycling. And we set up a project uh, yeah, to realize uh, plastic meta um, recycling. So as I said, metal recycling, very efficient, uh, no need to concentrate on. We would like to focus on the plastic recycling. Uh, we set up a process sequence by doing that plastic recycling. So in the first step, we have to um, separate the metal from the plastic layer. And therefore, we started with an ABS compound uh, with the chrome plated plastics. We um, do a pre-crushed pre-treatment and that, and then a, a, we call it shock wave treatment. And after all, because of um, the, the metallic layer also um, contains nickel inside, therefore the whole metallic layer is um, magnetic so we can do the magnetic separation on that and after all we received a purity of a 99 percent of both metal fraction and plastic fraction so this is quite successful right now so we took that recycled material and um, yeah did some molding tests or did some molding attempts and also some some electroplating on that molded parts and we were quite successful right now. So at the end, we have a um, 
yeah, good platable material and our research and development department is currently um, trying to get the material approval from different OEMs and we are also trying, of course, we, we would like to try to increase uh, the purity um, yeah, so that we are getting close to 100%. 99% is not good enough for all applications, but uh, we are convinced that we are close to and that we have finished successfully that project right soon. So wrapping it all up, we think um, or we are convinced that chrome meets customer expectations. Chrome is a high valuable surface. The metals them themselves are infinitely recyclable and we are sure that the plastic, um, what we also been able to recycle, we can use it in our own processes. So we would like clearly avoid um, downcycling or thermal recovery. So therefore here's, here's our offer. We take back all our chrome plated parts to put it in our new recycling process to get at the end uh, recycled materials which looks like the, uh, which has the same value than you take usual or normal raw materials which is common right now. So in the future the customer won't see any different between a recycled chrome plastic part or a new chrome plastic part. It is the same for the customer and that's the most important thing that um, yeah, customer won't see a difference between recycling or not recycling. That's the finish of my presentation. If you have any questions, comments, write it down in, in the chat room. We will answer it later on on our discussion. Or if you would like to set up a project with us, please keep in contact. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, what did we learn in this presentation. I have learned that plating on plastic products can shine more than just once in a lifetime. So the chance to recycle plated plastic, chrome plated plastic, give us a big advantage for the future and the use of plating on plastic parts. To answer your questions I need the help of the experts so I welcome on my right hand Johannes Groß our energy management system officer. Welcome, Hello, Johannes. Markus. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and on my left <coughs> hand, it's Dr. Markus Hepp, our uh, automotive te industry technology manager. Hello, Markus. Hello, Markus again. <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have already some questions. And uh, I think the first question uh, is for you, uh, Johannes. Uh, plating on plastic can do more than just shine, oh sorry, uh, that's, which standard, which standard do we use for uh, the, yeah, the, the accounting of the uh, chrome, uh, the, the, the carbon dioxide? Mm -hmm. Because uh, I have learned, <coughs> don't trust in any, yeah, statistics which you didn't do on your own, so. Um, yeah, that's true, Markus, of course. Um, we are using the GHG protocol here in BIA, it's the greenhouse gas protocol mm -hmm. and it's the best known standard for carbon accounting. A um, lot of companies are using it, it's well known in the industry and uh, what's very nice with it, it's following the simple rules of financial accounting. So everything needs to be complete, it needs to be relevant, it needs to be transparent and it needs to be, um, yeah understandable for everyone. So um, this is the principles the GHG protocol is operating on and we are following the GHG protocol. Mm -hmm. So uh, you said it's very transparent and, and very clear what we have to uh, collect within the company. Mm -hmm. So um, what part of this analysis of for the carbon footprint is used at BR? So is it uh, uh, the total product or is it uh, only the production of the mm. product? No, it's uh, the total product. Um, in, in the carbon accounting, you have typically three scopes. Mm -hmm. Scope one is your direct emissions. It's, to say it in easy words, is everything what you burn in your facility. So the gas for your heating systems, mm -hmm. the fuel in the cars, and uh, if you use fuel for your heating system, also the fuel that you are burning in your heating system. Um, the second scope 
uh, is the indirect emissions, everything that is going to be burned somewhere else, coal um, um, to, to, uh, to produce energy, electric energy that is going to be transferred to you. Mm -hmm. yeah, and the third scope is every pre-product that you buy uh, and the services that you buy. Mm -hmm. so, so we are accounting, or we are counting uh, uh, scope one and scope two. Now, and I also think. scope three okay. on our mm -hmm. side, but it's a little bit difficult to, to, to do the very precise accounting for scope three mm -hmm. because you do not have all the measures that you need, all the numbers that you need to do the precise calculation. Mm -hmm. For example, you will find on the internet or in, in databases, you will find the amount of carbon dioxide, one kilogram of copper mm -hmm. needs to be shipped or produced and shipped to your facility. But for, for copper salts, it's ag and again different, but you do not find the exact number. So we are calculating the amount of copper, which is inside the salt and the other part of the salt. And uh, then we are saying, okay, inside uh, our copper salt bag, 50% is copper. And then we are taking uh, uh, yeah, half a kilo of copper to account. Okay. So uh, at the end of the day, it to me it looks like as if you are trying to yeah, calculate the carbon dioxide emission of each article which we have. So are you able to yeah, give to each customer a certificate with the carbon dioxide content of the product? Yes, in the last few months we were working on a method um, to calculate the carbon footprint of our products. Um, and we are doing it by, yeah, um, by the weight and the surface of the part. So we know uh, how much electric energy we are using in our injection molding shop. Mm -hmm. We know how much kilograms of, uh, of plastics we are consuming in one year in the injection molding shop. Mm -hmm. And then a percentage, which is represented by the weight of the one part that we are talking about, is taken to into the account. So theoretically, we are able to provide on the delivery note to our customer also as in position the, um, the, the weight in, uh, of carbon dioxide we are also bringing with the parts to our customer. Mm, that's very interesting. So I think um, this will be yeah, the future that we mm. all take into <coughs> account the, the number or the, the amount of carbon dioxide which we are emitting for, for the production mm. of each product. But... Uh, Another interesting topic is the recycling of the material. But uh, uh, Markus, yeah. uh, um, you as the automotive industry manager, uh, um, you have to yeah, bring nice products to the customers. If I saw the lady on the, on, in your presentation, she, to me she was not very happy about the dress she was wearing. So will our recycled products look like, uh, yeah, like an old dress? No, that's definitely not what we want to. Yeah. Um, our purpose is, um, because I'm also a consumer, I'm not only a supplier of chrome-plated parts, I'm also a consumer. Um, I, I have my own car, I drive my car, and I would like uh, to expect both. I, of course, I want sustainability in my car, or sustainable surfaces, and I also want um, yeah, high-valuable surfaces. Mm -hmm. They have to look bright and shiny, and they have to be durable. So, um, therefore, I expect, of course, both sustainability and um, yeah, valuable surfaces. And, and our benchmark is, for example, in Germany here, the, the German paper um, recycling industry. Yeah, yeah. If, if you look at them, um, they, they uh, started in the past with, um, yeah, with their recycling process. And um, you, you um, definitely saw a, um, yeah, a difference between a recycled material and a conventional material. And um, over the years, um, they improved their processes and um, it, it changed a lot. So today, it's um, not possible for a consumer to distinguish between a um, recycled paper and a, and a conventional paper. So, and this is also our purpose. Um, a consumer, there's no need to that a consumer um, recognizes that he has a sustain only a sustainable surface in, in his hand even if it does look very shiny mm -hmm. and bright, um, he's more also interested in the, um, yeah, in the value and, and, and in the appearance of, the, of that surface. So mm -hmm. this is our purpose, um, yeah, to give shiny and, and good appearance and also sustainable mm -hmm. surface. So, so no 
difference in, in technical features, no difference in, in optical features. It will be the same yeah. product. Yeah, right. Okay. So as you mentioned, a second life. Give, give the product a second life mm -hmm. and a real second life. No downcycling, no thermal recovery, nothing. Okay. That's, that's very interesting. So, uh, and, and what is the uh, yeah, advantage for our customers with this? Uh, do you see the influence on the, on the uh, carbon footprint of our articles? Of course, um, yeah. <laughs> Not easy to answer because um, Johannes mentioned it already. Um, mm -hmm. the, the, um, the data is, is not easy to, to calculate everything. So we need more details to, to do a, a, val a valid calculation on that. How much carbon dioxide can we, can we reduce um, or how we can reduce our, our footprint. So um, this is what we are doing, what we are calculating. Um, but mean we expect, of course, uh, a reduction of, of um, the carbon dioxide footprint. So when, when the processes are established and, and uh, working very efficient. So, uh, but meanwhile, um, I heard also that, the, uh, that uh, some mm. OEMs are considering, um, before we have valid figures on our hand, uh, that they are considering um, to calculate as, um, the footprint as zero by using recycled materials. So therefore, the, the amount of, of um, um, recycled materials will increase in a, in a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And okay. it become more attractive maybe to, to um, start with the recycling process. Yeah, I think uh, you, you clearly also said that it's already today very interesting to recycle the material al already because of the metal on the on the yes, plastic. Of course. So that is really money, yeah, to yeah. be to be honest. And yeah. Uh, yeah, that in the future will also will give an ad additional benefit to to chrome plated plastics. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, we we could see uh, this development, but do we already use recycled materials in, in the production, in, in VIA's production? Yes, we, we already use pro, um, recycled materials. Um, we, use, we are focused on our scrap rates, of course. We, um, we have a molding scrap. This scrap is used um, for uh, yeah, internal processes. We, we um, mold um, shielding stripes for the electroplating plant, uh, which are necessary, we need them. And therefore, we already know um, that um, recycled plastic material is, is, has a good plating ability. So, so we are able to plate um, yeah, recycled material very easily. Uh, we get good pro uh, physical properties on that. So this is uh, the knowledge we took out of, out of yeah, this process, the recycling process. And a second one is the um, electroplating scrap. This one is used for, of course, for our um, process optimization mm -hmm. and um, for the recycling process. So we can do a lot of uh, enough trials on that. And uh, second one um, is, of course, for years we mm -hmm. are um, giving this scrap to our uh, professional external metal recyclers. So they recycle the complete metal on of that scrap, and um, yeah, they they um, do the uh, for the plastic. They do the thermal recovery. And this is, of course, we don't want to, mm -hmm. um, yeah, to burn that plastic material only once to get the energy out of it. So that's uh, the reason why we are interested in, or we are focused in on the recycling of the, of the plastics. Mm -hmm. Okay, dear ladies and gentlemen, this was our first round of discussions. If you have more questions, uh, please use the chat function, which is uh, in, in the screen. So I think uh, it, it we are happy to answer your questions in the second round, which will be after the next two topics. So energy consumption, climate neutrality, sustainability, these topics we already heard about in this uh, BIA Info Forum. But avoiding hazardous materials in the production process was a topic which we already had in the past. So we all already talked about this in the, in the past years ago, that we want to avoid chromium trioxide in the production. And also the European Union has given a regulation which asked the companies using chromium trioxide to substitute the material or to get an authorization <coughs> for this material. But I can tell you, BIA already started to 
substitute chromium trioxide or to do trials on substituting chromium trioxide long before it was a legal demand to substitute chromium trioxide. And to show to you what we are doing to substitute chromium trioxide in our production, I would like you to follow me to our production plant. Come with me. Behind me, you can see our line BR3. At its start of production in 2007, this line was one of the most advanced plating lines in the world. The cableless energy and data transfer by Wi-Fi gives this line a flexibility which is unique. At the same time, when we developed this line, we also introduced the trivalent chrome process as well as a low chrome edge. Whereas the low chrome edge didn't perform well and we had to exchange it by a classical edge after a short while, the trivalent chrome process led us to good results and we finally were able to produce uh, sanitary bathroom articles in this line. However, Bia's development was ahead of time. The customers didn't like the slight yellow surface finish of the chrome, since they were afraid of color differences in case of mixed assemblies at cars. Only a few plumbing hardware articles could be plated with the trivalent chrome. But for Bia, this had been the chance to get more experience and improve the process. This development has been driven to a success and today we can offer to our customers trivial and chrome finishes at all our plants in the BIA group. Developing the alternative chrome processes, BIA has focused on the so-called sulfate-based electrolytes. These offer the advantage that the color of the chrome finish is very close to the classical chrome finish deposited from hexavalent chrome electrolytes. The processes of the latest generation show in the LAB color scale negative B values so that they are shining bluish like the classical chrome finishes. This offers the opportunity to use them in mixed assemblies or as spare parts mixed with classical chrome parts in older cars. At the moment we work on the qualification of new products for the trivalent chrome process as well as a switch of articles in the production to the new surface finish. This change needs a simple and reasonable uh, qualification process which is approved by our direct customers as well as the OEMs. Today we see BIA on a good way and we will change all chrome process to tribal and chrome until 2025. The pretreatment of plastics is also depending on tribal and chromium. However, the development of alternatives for this process has not been as advanced as with the tribal and electrolytes. As a member of the Fachverband Galvanisierte Kunststoffe, the German Association of Plating on Plastic Companies, BIA actively supported the testing of the available pretreatment processes for plastic-based material. The results have been published and the latest round-robin test trials will be available in the beginning of 2022. I don't leak a secret when I tell you that the results of the new alternative chrome-free edge processes are better than in the first trials. However, to achieve industrially reliable processes, we need further research and development work. To have the time to fin finalize the work on Chrome Free Edge, we decided to apply for an authorization at the Chemicals Agency in Helsinki, with, together with our partners. At the same time, we invest into a big new plating line where we can test the Chrome Free Edge available from our chemical partners. This new line enables BIA to qualify and test chrome free edge of different process suppliers under real serious conditions. The qualified processes we will implement in all new BIA lines step by step. These changes need fundamental changes of the line's design, 
so that we need more time for the realization of the changes. The substitution plan of the FGK, which has been developed using the individual change plans of the FGK member companies, shows that the industry will need until 2032 to fade out the use of chromium trioxide. The European Chemicals Agency in Helsinki, the highest scientific based authority for chemicals in the European Union, has judged the plan of the FGK as credible and forwarded the plan to the European Commission for approval. With this approval, the BIA Group has enough time to finish the switch to chromium trioxide free production together with its customers but also with other market participants. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we, the people of the BR Group, stand for a safe and environmentally friendly production of chrome plastic plastics. Because of the superior characteristics of the real metal finish, chrome plated plastics fulfill the demands on modern automotive design. The chrome parts of the BR Group can be recycled totally and offer unmatched sustainability. Therefore, Chrome also in the future will be the benchmark for quality and sustainability. Dear ladies and gentlemen, in the video you could see that Bia is promoting the substitution of hazardous materials uh, regardless of any legal uh, regulations. So we think to substitute uh, chromium trioxide is yeah, a need also to make our production safe and to protect our workers in our plant. Therefore, we need time. And I can only appeal to the politicians in Brussels to give us the time so that we are able to substitute chromium trioxide in our production together with our customers and the automotive companies. So now we have learned a lot about climate neutrality, about uh, uh, sustainability, as well as uh, protect, uh, workplace protection. I would also like to introduce to you what new features we can do with chrome-plated plastics. And of course, of course the, the combination of chrome with other technologies is also very interesting. Dr. Felix Heinzler, our chief uh, development officer will explain to you the new features of the products which are in our development, in our R&D group at the moment and maybe even already on its way to our customers' plans and at the end of the day in new cars. So please have a look to Dr. Felix Heinzler. Welcome to the last presentation in our BIA online forum in 2021. I would like to show you some technology spotlights for new development and implementations within our serious production within the last year. We will first have a look at dark chrome surfaces as a new electrolyte implemented here in Solingen as well as uh, black laser structuring we also have implemented in serious production within the last year. Then we'll have a look at, let's say, research and development topics. We have some parts for electroplating for film insert molding, and we are able to present you today some first prototype for touch operations with real metallic surfaces. So first part, we'll have a look at the dark surfaces. As I already mentioned, we have implemented in our third electroplating line, a new electrolyte which is able to uh, provide um, dark chrome surfaces based on a trivalent uh, chrome. We established it in 2021, so we are just started within the series production. And as you can see in the pictures, we have the known uh, bright chrome finishes and can directly switch it to the new dark chrome finishes. So there are no geometries that are not possible within this electrolyte if they are platable within the known bright finishes. 
You can also see that we have also the laser structuring of the surface applied on these structures. So the combination with our known technologies from the laser structuring is possible as well. So we have on the one hand the texture chrome for just structures on the surface as well as some ambient light for example if you want to backlight these gear shifters. With the laser structuring we have the switch to the next topic. We have implemented a new laser, a new laser technology here in Solingen. Um, by a very high frequency pulse of the laser we are able to um, switch the bright chrome surface to a near black area. So we are able to implement design patterns, symbols and lettering for um, let's say a clear contrast in black letters on the surface as we have presented here on these pictures. You can um, just have a clear background with a bright chrome surface and then we make black lines on the surface or a lettering with the company name for example. Um, you can also combine both technologies, the new dark chrome electrolyte with the new laser structuring. So for example in these patterns we have again laser structured an already dark chrome surface to make some more patterns available. So we have here some very innovative possibilities for new design approaches. Next topic is the film technology we have developed with Covesto within the last several years. This is a PC ABS film that is specially designed for plating uh, applications. It is back molded as a decorative film with polycarbonate and so we are able to um, implement a very high transparency by the polycarbonate and a very low film of ABS or very thin area of ABS. But the ABS is designed to be able to be plated and at the moment we can say that we pass every OEM specification for um, climate change test, uh, heat resistance and corrosion tests. Um, then we are able to um, implement let's say living colors by the different polycarbonates. We have designed some small samples here with a neon polycarbonate and you can see that we have a very clear color by the laser structuring in combination with the metallic surface on the film. In these areas you can see that the film can also be printed from the backside so we are able to implement colors in certain areas, make some laser structuring in these areas and therefore also implement different design patterns. So the film will be a very good approach to match colors, high transparency for ambient light and stability within the aging process as the color in the polycarbonate will not shift as it is known for the ABS. On this picture we have the exact opposite from the um, shown technology. In these areas we have um, let's say selective films. As we have before we had a PC ABS film that is designed for plating. We now have an ABS on PC film that is designed for selective plating. So as you can see we have the known decorations from automotive design as film insert moldings for example and in this um, areas we just back molded is with some ABS. As the film has a special top coat it matches the required um, chemical resistance in the automotive design but it also matches the required chemical resistance for selective plating. So now we can take the back molded film um, part and directly give it to the plating line the film will not be uh, attacked by the chemicals and only the ABS will be plated. So we can implement a high variations of different decor design elements and reduce assembly cost as the design trim with the chrome line here is directly assembled to the um, main decor. Last part of our presentation, the BR Touch technology or BR Touch Chrome. Um, as first point, we can also um, backlight the films, as you know from our texture chrome applications, for some ambient light. And as you see, the living colors 
um, have a very good approach in the night design. But in these areas, we want to focus on the BR Touchroom technology. We developed within the last several years a new combination of sensor technology and plating. Uh, the normal capacity uh, or capacity sensors for touch technology are not able to work behind a real metallic surface. So um, we needed to uh, adapt the sensor technology and found a new approach. This is a patented design and we now are able to apply on a complete metallic surface certain areas with a touch operation as well as sliders. To show you the function, I would like to switch to a small film. As you can see here, we have um, designed a prototype and set some switches to the surface for switching on and off and change the mode, for example, the color of the ambient light. We have implemented also some slider technology um, that can change, for example, the brightness. And in certain areas, we can just switch on some functions, for example, the lighting of um, these areas. We can change, of course, the functions as required for the special areas where we shall um, implement these technologies. So far with the last presentation of our BR online forum, I'd uh, like to discuss several questions from your side to our new technologies and possible applications. And yes, feel free to ask questions. Thank you. Dear ladies and gentlemen, we could see that BIA is working on new finishes with new features. I think 15 years ago it started with the BR night design. Today we have a lot of more varieties of surface finishes and technologies available. To discuss these technologies with you, I like to welcome Dr. Felix Heinzler, head of our R&D group here in Solingen. Hello, Markus. Your video was really interesting for me because I need a new car <laughs> and I just wanted to ask you, when can I get these new technologies in my car? Uh, well, I think some of them are already available. Uh, the dark chrome finishes are in actual serious um, approach for exterior trims and the black laser structuring for some interior trims where we uh, mark them with the company name. Um, this is available within the next month, let's say. The next steps are the uh, film approaches. We have some discussions maybe to implement them for 2024. I think the touch technology is a completely different matter as we have to change assemblies and operation structures within the next generation car design. Mm -hmm. So we can just give some ideas and possibilities to the OEMs and the designers. If they like them, they can implement them and we are happy to help to make the next generation car design as interesting as possible. Now they have to like them because <laughs> I, as a customer, like them, so they have to put it into the new cars. For the touch comb, you have to wait some, <laughs> some time. <laughs> okay. So there's an interesting question about uh, um, yeah, recycling and carbon footprint. When you do your developments, uh, do you yeah, take these uh, uh, yeah, uh, features or these uh, needs into account? Um, of course, we try to have a look at these areas. Um, I would say the design for recycling is a bit too much, but um, we try to have a look at different recycling materials and how we can implement them in our general processes. For example, for painted parts, just to increase the amount of recycled recycling content within the polymers. Mm -hmm. um, if we have a look at the new developments, we have, for example, the, the film technology where we are able um, with a developed separating and recycling of our general scrap to separate the ABS, the PC and the uh, metallic content. And for the film, it's just the PC and the metallic content which can be separated even in the complete general process. So we are able to take it into account, but it's not the complete design for recycling. Uh, therefore, we have to go next to our customers to have a closer look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So we received already some questions which I have here on my hand and uh, there is one, yeah, I think, general question. Um, is there a ban of hexavalent chrome in 2024? Uh, I think, Markus, you would be the one to answer this question. Okay. Yeah, I can do. Um, so there is definitely no ban for, um, in, for 2024 um, for cr hexavalent chrome. Um, the, we submitted a, um, the, uh, the application for authorization in 2016. Mm -hmm. And um, last year, we um, were requested from the um, European Commission to um, submit a, a substitution plan, um, which of course we did. And um, this substitution plan contains a strategy how and uh, in, in what way and, and how long it takes to, to reduce mm. the hexavalent chrome and to get to zero co uh, hexavalent chrome consumption. So um, we submitted that plan and that substitution plan and the um, European Chemistry Association which is uh, commissioned by the EU to assess those um, substitution plans. Um, they assessed this plan as absolutely credible. So, um, and they only have two assessments, credible and non-credible. So okay, our yeah. plan mm -hmm. was, was credible. So therefore we expect that um, the, the, co the European Commission will follow this um, suggestion from the ECHA. And um, therefore there is no sign at all that uh, a ban will be in 2024. Okay, so uh, another question to this topic. Um, until when do you think will we have the uh, decision of the European Commission to, to the substitution plan? Frankly, I don't know, because um, they, they have an agenda mm -hmm. and they are... They are um, yeah, they meet every six months, I, I think. So, so this is their frequency when they, when they sit together and, and took decisions about um, yeah, substances of very high concern and so on and so on. And, and um, they put these um, substitution plans or these authorization <coughs> plans on an, an agenda. And you, if you are not on that agenda, they uh, won't be a decision mm -hmm. on that meeting. So um, therefore, the, the last um, um, meeting they had, I, I think they, the, the, it was in October and it was not on the agenda. So mm -hmm. we hope that in six months, maybe or in four months, they will take the decision or they will take our um, application on the agenda to, to do the decision. Okay. But honestly, I really do not know okay. when it will happen. But the good thing is, um, as long as they not decided or has not decided, so we are allowed to use uh, hexavalent chrome without any restrictions, mm -hmm. even that. So the longer it takes on the commission, the longer yeah, we can use with no restriction. And after that, we can follow, of course, we are, so we are so already following our substitution yeah, plan so right now. This, this will, will give us the time to develop the alternative. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, one question, I think that's for our uh, um, yeah, um, energy management officer, Johannes Groß. Uh, Johannes, um, are painted parts really more friendly for the environment? Does BIA have experience with the comparison of the carbon footprint painting and plating? Uh, that's a good question, Markus. And of course, um, we have... Uh, some data in comparison between plated parts and uh, painted parts, what's the carbon footprint of the part, um, because we have our painting line here in Bia. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, to answer your question, we always need to think about the painting technology, which painting technology is used. If you use the standard painting technology, which is mostly used in the, in the industry, the painted part has a, a worse uh, carbon footprint than the plated part. That's, that's new to me. To be honest, I, I always thought that uh, uh, yeah, electroplating needs such a lot of uh, energy for uh, electrolysis and so on. So here you say uh, you have compared it and you can see the, yeah. the chrome plated the part is uh, yeah. it's more efficient. If you use the standard painting mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, known in the industry, the, the plating is more efficient. Mm -hmm. But if you compare our uh, modern uh, painting line which we uh, introduced uh, in BIA uh, one year ago 
um, the comparison is one to one. So it's the same carbon footprint uh, from the new modern uh, efficient painting lines to our new modern efficient plating lines. Um, but also the aspect of environmental friendly products we should take into consideration. Mm -hmm. And as Markus were already um, speaking about in his, in his uh, speech, is that we are recycling our materials at the moment. So we found a way, a technology, to separate the metal layer and the plastics, recycle the metal and the plastics. And uh, at the moment, it, there is no technology available to separate the paint, recover the paint and the plastics, recover the plastic and use it again in the process. Mm -hmm. So uh, for my, for in my opinion, with uh, the recycling technology, we are ahead of the painting. Okay, interesting. So, next question. What about the installation space and the cost of the new Bia Touch technology? Um, this is a question for the complete assembly, as we cannot discuss it just for the chrome-plated decorative part. Um, I think we can reduce the necessary mm. installation space for the complete assembly to integrate these functions. Um, if we have just a, a decor area with some laser structured, let's say, um, points where you can operate, for example, um, the, um, some levers, um, we can reduce these areas to just one decorative parts in comparison to, let's say, two to three uh, buttons. We need no mechanical functions, and the actual design of our sensor should be able to be integrated directly on the PCB mm -hmm. that is normally installed uh, below our decorative areas. So um, plus minus a bit, we should be able to reduce the necessary installation space. Um, the costs are another topic where we are um, on a good way to be able to reduce the assembly costs mm -hmm. or the cost for the complete assembly as we have um, less parts, less uh, buttons we need to install, less uh, tools for the injection molding, and therefore um, we will be able to reduce the assembly cost as well. Interesting, yeah. Another question which is, yeah, you showed different colors, but I think it's uh, the different chrome colors which is, is meant here. Uh, can the BIA group provide the new chrome colors Worldwide, so in every installation, do we have uh, uh, the different chrome, tribal and chrome colors? Yes, we have. Um, uh, it depends mainly on um, yeah the customer demands. Um, mm -hmm. So we supply locally what the customer demands in that local area. So, for example, um, the, the the French customers of, of French OEMs and 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 um, Scandinavian OEMs and also Japanese OEMs mm -hmm. are yeah requesting a more warm yellowish finish on that. So um, we are able to provide um, this finish um, locally in in Slovakia and also in China mm -hmm. and in our Mexican plant because there are the customers sitting uh, where we supply um, our chrome plated parts and where they are to the tier one suppliers and, and um, where they are assembled and um, yeah therefore mm -hmm. the, these electrolytes are, are available in, in that regions. Um, the, the German OEMs uh, tends more to the um, more bluish color which is similar to the um, classical chromium mm -hmm. color so um, and also, these are worldwide operating companies, of course, and uh, therefore we have uh, installations in Germany mainly. Um, we have it in in Slovakian plant, and we have also in in in, Chi in our Chinese uh, location installed this one. And Mexico, our Mexico Mexican mm -hmm. plant will follow soon um, to fulfill this demand for the bluish color. And we have some special colors. The dark chrome is installed here in Solingen, as as Felix mentioned. Um, we have there. There are cars. Uh, yeah, there are cars built with that um, dark chrome color, so we can supply them here from Germany mm. um, if the demand increases and if, if it's rolled out worldwide. So we we are able to yeah supply it also in our other plants. So mm. we, we we have always taken into account how many space do we need um, in in our plants or how much space do we mm. need in our plants. Um, to, to fulfill all the demands and to do the installations. 
I have uh, two questions which maybe can be dealt in one answer. One is, do you focus on the recycling of ABS or rare considering the recycling of PC ABS as well? So do we do both materials? And mm -hmm. the other question is, uh, does BIA also take back and recycle parts from its competitors? Okay, start with the first question. Yeah. Um, yes, of course, PC ABS is also recyclable. Um, and and um, we are trying to figure out if it is um, in combination with ABS recyclable because these two components are um, compatible to each other. So and and the main demand uh, to recycle a, a material is mm. uh, compatibility. So um, you can mix them together and you can recycle it in one step. So yes, it is possible to recycle also PC ABS mm. um, and even in combination with ABS. And the second question was, do we also take back the material which has been produced by our competition? Of course we can, <laughs> Be because, because um, they have um, the same, they are using the same plastic material because uh, there are only limited amounts of um, plating grade material for the electric plating uh, industry available. So they use usually the same plastic quality that we use. So. Um, we can take them back, of course, or we can take them and recycle them also, yeah, mm -hmm. if we are provided by them. And as you mentioned, we have a value on, on that part because there is a metallic layer on it. So, um, yeah. It clearly makes sense to, to it take sense back. It makes for us yeah. to take them back. Mm -hmm. And actually, we would need some more feedstock for the recycled polymer because our low scrap rate would not allow a certain <laughs> amount of recycled material content in every part we produce. So absolutely. we need some more feedstock for recyclable parts. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. The more we get, the better it is. The better, yeah. I'm happy that you say that we have such a low scrap rate that it's not <laughs> enough <laughs> of to, course. <laughs> to do the recycling. It's only it? for the recycling trial. <laughs> <laughs> so one question uh, about uh, chrome and finish, uh, uh, the chrome finish and the edge uh, does the EU Commission uh, decide on the chrome plating and the etching of plastic in separate, uh, yeah, um, yeah, uh, separate um, decisions? Mm -hmm. So, in the beginning, when we applied the um, our our ori original authorization mm -hmm. um, application, uh, we put everything together. Mm -hmm. uh, because we um, dis uh, did um, yeah, distinguish between um, um, the edge and the um, um, plating mm -hmm. step. Um, today, because it is, um, yeah, um, we are, we are more or less ready with the we chrome are more plating. You're right, we <laughs> yeah. are more or less ready with the chromium solution. So there is, this is only a question of time and, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, to, to to organize everything, to, to implement it in, in every plant. And mm -hmm. um, therefore, the plating process is we, we can substitute and we are going to substitute them um, for the um, etching process. There is R&D mm -hmm. um, still necessary. So therefore, we um, uh, in our substitution plan, we separated both mm -hmm. because now we have two different timelines. So, uh, we have so the EU Commission can can Split it and yeah. can take a decision on yeah. each. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's because if they, we have, for, so to speak, we have two substitution mm. plans. So we, okay. we made two out of one. Okay. If I look to my papers, I didn't receive any new questions. And uh, yeah, we are at the end of our BIA online info forum. So, dear ladies and gentlemen, what did you see this afternoon? BIA is producing interesting finishes. BIA is produce, producing good parts for the automotive industry already today. We will in the future promote or will uh, offer these good technologies climate neutral. We will also re take back the old and used parts and recycle it to be much more sustainable. And of course, give us a little bit time. At the end of the day, this all will be free of chromium trioxide. So ladies and gentlemen, I think 
this is the good news for you, good news for Bia, and I can only say stay healthy.